Area of quadrilaterals. Well, what is a quadrilateral? A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. And we're going to take a look at three different quadrilaterals in this video. Well, what is a polygon? A polygon is a closed figure made up of straight lines. Now, three of these are polygons. This oval is not a polygon because it's not made up of straight lines. These are all closed figures, and they're all made up of straight lines. Well, what's the difference between a regular and an irregular polygon? A regular polygon has sides and angles that are all of equal size and length. These three are all regular polygons. All their sides and angles are congruent. This rectangle, however, is an irregular polygon because not all of its sides are the same length. Is a circle a polygon? Well, as we mentioned before, no, because it's not made up of straight lines. So which quadrilateral formulas do we have to know? Well, we're going to take a look at three different ones in this video. The first is for a square. And the formula is area equals side times side or side squared. You simply take one side and multiply it times another. So the area of this square would be 16 square units. The formula for a rectangle is either length times width or base times height. You can do base times height or length times width. The third formula we're going to look at is for a parallelogram. And that formula is area is equal to the base times the height. This is your base, and this would be your height. And you'll notice if we pull this parallelogram apart, we end up with a square. If we pull this parallelogram apart, we end up with a rectangle. You could actually use base times height as your formula for squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. It would per work perfectly fine for all three. So what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both sides parallel. So are these parallelograms? Well, this has two sets of parallel sides, so that's a parallelogram. Same with this. This also has two sets of parallel sides. This only has one pair of parallel sides. This is a trapezoid. It's not a parallelogram and we'll be examining trapezoids in another video. Well, when you're talking about the base, which side is the base? Well, in this particular example, 8 is our base. However, if you wanted, you could rotate it and 5 could be the base. The same holds true for a parallelogram. Right now, this is the base, but we could rotate that and this would be the base. Now, if you were the teacher, would you accept these labels when dealing with area? Would you take 15 square centimeters as a label? Well, sure, that's perfectly fine. What about 15 square centimeters? Yeah, that's fine as well. That's just a different way of writing this. Now, what about 15, square, 15 squared centimeters? This is a common mistake that students will make. 15 squared is 225. This would be 225 centimeters. So that would not be an acceptable label. Well, let's try a few examples. Let's start with a square. Let me grab my pen. And give me a second here. OK, so we're going to use uh, the formula area equals side times side. And all four sides of the square are the same, so we're just going to do 6 times 6. So our area in this first example would be 36 square feet. And you can write it like this, or if I wanted, I could write it 36 square feet. Either label is fine. All right, let's take a look at a rectangle. I'm going to use base times height. So area equals base times height. Now I'm going to substitute in. Our base is right here, is 9, and our height is 4. So the area of this rectangle would be 36. 
36, and let me get my label here, 36 square centimeters. I'll write this one a little differently. Okay, how about a parallelogram? I'm going to use base times height. And our base, I'm going to substitute in, our base here is 9. Now this is a common mistake that students will make for the height. This is not the height of the parallelogram. If you think when you're in the kitchen and your parents are measuring how tall you are up against the wall, they don't take the ruler and put it diagonal. This is the height of our parallelogram. They put the ruler, the yardstick, straight up and down. So our height is 5 in this particular example, and then 9 times 5 is 45. So the area of our parallelogram would be 45 square meters. And I apologize for these equal signs. There we go. It's a little better. Okay. Well, how do I find the area of irregular shapes? So here we have an irregular shape, and there's really three different ways you could do this. I could break this into two different size rect rectangles. So I could find the area of this and then add the area of this. Or if I wanted, I could find the area of this rectangle, and then I could add the area of this rectangle. Well, there is a third option. You could think of this as one gigantic rectangle and then subtract out this rectangle here. And all three, it doesn't matter which you decide to do, would give you the same result. Let's take a look at this irregular shape. So if you were finding the area of this irregular shape, you could break this. This is one way that you could break it up. You could break it up into three different size rectangles. Now be careful what numbers you multiply. For this green area, I would do 16 times 22. For this pink area, I would do 7 times 22. And for this yellow area, I would do 7. Now what would the height, if I did base times height, our base would be 7. What's the height? Well, we've got a little work to do here. I know from here to here is 22. So from here to here is 22. And I know this distance is 8. 8 plus what would give us 22? It would actually be 14. So to find the area of this yellow section, I would do 7 times 14. Well, that's pretty much all there is to uh, our three different formulas, the three different formulas we looked at for quadrilaterals, for squares, rectangles, and parallelograms.